morning. My name is Allison McCartney and I'm the Vice Chair of the Mississippi Bat Working Group. And today I want to talk a little bit about MISNET surveys. There's several survey efforts that we do um, when we're researching bats and whatever method you use is kind of dependent upon your questions, what species you're targeting and what questions you're asking. But the main survey efforts that we use uh, when we're studying bats is roost surveys, where you're looking at bats in their roosts, whether it be man-made roosts, like um, bridges or culverts or houses, abandoned houses or otherwise, or natural roosts, like trees. Um, we also do acoustic surveys, which involves using specialized equipment that you set out and it records bat calls, a lot of which is in frequencies that we can't hear. And then you can download it to your computer and um, get some ideas as to what species it might, might be based on the, uh, the way the call looks once it's graphed. And uh, our third survey uh, method that we commonly use is MISNET surveys. And MISNET surveys um, are a great method. It's a little bit labor intensive and sometimes you don't end up catching anything, but uh, it's a great survey method to find out what bats are in a certain area. So um, I was gonna set up a MISNET and uh, give you kind of an idea as to um, how we do that survey effort. The first thing that you need to look at is you need to locate your site. So, um, the site that you pick, again, is going to be kind of dependent upon the questions that you're asking and if you're targeting a certain species. If you're targeting northern long-eared bats, just for example, they're uh, found oftentimes on ridge tops, in, um, on trails. And so if you were targeting the northern long-eared bat and you were trying to find that species, that might be the type of site that you would look at. But in general, your most common scenario is that you're looking at a refuge to see what bat species might be there, or you're looking at a certain site to determine what bats are there. So in that case, you, want to, you would want to try several different types of sites. This site right here, it's a small creek. It's not an ideal site, and that's something that you'll come across a lot, especially if you're trying to look at a certain refuge, for example, or a certain tract of land. You just kind of got to go with the best sites you can find on that parcel. And sometimes they're ideal, sometimes they're not. So this particular site has some uh, good parts to it and some not so good parts. Uh, the good part is that this is a fairly, um, it's kind of the canopy is creating a tunnel in a way. And so bats are going to be forced to kind of come down towards your net. Um, the bad part is there's not a lot of water. It's really pretty thin, um, but it, like I said, mist netting is one of those things where you never know what you're gonna catch or where. There's times that I picked out what I thought was the best site and we were gonna be busy all night long and we didn't catch a thing. So you never know. Um, what's gonna be a determining factor a lot of times is how close a roost is nearby. So when bats leave their roost uh, in the evening time, usually right about sunset or right after sunset, usually the first thing they do is go towards a water source to get a drink of water. Bug activity is usually high above water. So a lot of times you will want to net water. But sometimes trails work out great. Uh, sometimes roads, sometimes across bridges. But most of the time we net water. So something to keep in mind is that um, you kind of want to pick a water source that ideally is not near another water source. There's been times that I've netted a, a tributary, for example, off of a larger river, and it usually doesn't work out that well because water kind of needs to, needs to be a limiting factor for them to come to your water source. Out west, I've heard examples where people will actually net over um, water cattle troughs because water is so limited out there that bats will come from miles around to this water source. So in Mississippi, we don't have that benefit. But, um, but so this is the site that I've picked for today. And uh, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start setting up a net. There's several different kinds of, um, and sizes of nets that you can use. Um, most of the time your net will range from about 2.5 
to 12 meters, but they go up to 18 meters as well, and actually even longer, but even 18 meters can get kind of unwieldy, and that would be more suited for like a large pond. This site would be ideal for a 2.5 meter, a really small net, just because it's so thin. So you have single high nets and then you have triple high nets. I always do single high. They are easier to set up, uh, but triple highs would not work in this setting, for example, because the canopy is too low. But where they do work really well is out west, I've heard, for example, like down in canyons. They work really well because you have bats traveling along this waterway down in this canyon. Um, but not necessarily right at the water. So sometimes you can catch bats more with triple highs, which is really a very high net set. And uh, you might catch species that you wouldn't normally catch down low. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start setting up um, this net. And if you have the opportunity to net with someone and to net with several people, Everybody sets up their nets a little bit different. Everybody's got little tricks that they do. Um, so it's great if you want to learn how to set up a mist net. It's great if you have the opportunity to learn from several different people because different people have different ideas and it just kind of um, comes to you as you go type of thing. So it's a very fine uh, net. It's kind of like a hair net. It's real fine. And uh, this blue right here is the one that needs to go on top. So this is a brand new net. So you pull this out. This is uh, in these loops right here. You pull this blue one out and you make sure that this is at the very top. You pull it away from the others, but hang on to this ring right here so you don't lose it. And then you grab your next loop and find out which one is next by pulling lightly on it. And get your third one and your fourth and your fifth. Now your poles, most people's poles will be in sections of three. Um, I've already got one set up here. So you'll put your bottom one on first. And what I do, and this is one of those cases where everybody does something a little bit different. Um, but what I do is I pull it real tight, if you can see that, I pull it real tight and I tie a knot so it's tight on your pole and won't, you know, be real loose and fall down on you once you get a bat in there. And then I tie each of these into knots to make it a little tighter. The idea behind this is that we're going to string up a net, one pole on one side and one pole on the other side, open up the net so that uh, when bats come at sunset, now you don't want to open your net until right at sunset because you don't want to catch birds and other things. So you open them up right at sunset and uh, a little while later, bats hopefully will start coming down for a drink and trying to get insects and end up falling into your net and get caught. And then you can take them out, uh, determine their species, the sex, uh, common measurements you take is their forearm right here from shoulder to elbow uh, and their weight and their reproductive status if they're pregnant or lactating. So this is what the net looks like. And you string this up across the creek. One pole on one side and one on the other side. And the idea, like I said, is that the bat is going to fall and get caught in this net. These nets are pretty tricky. They tangle real easy. Ideally, you have two people or more help you set it up. Um, but it's sometimes you can, once you get used to it, you can set them up yourself. So that's the general idea behind mist netting. Um, I hope that's helpful. And um, if you ever want to look at the Mississippi Bat Working Group uh, website or Facebook page, I highly encourage you. There's all kinds of information on that site. And um, we always welcome people at our annual meetings and annual MissNet events. So thanks for your time today.